All right, it is 7.01, and I'm going to call this meeting to order. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. So next we will move on to the approval of the agenda. So I move. Here we go. Lennel. Do I have a second? Second. Doug? Any uh, comments? Adrian? Hi, I wanted to add the ad hoc committee that you had up back onto the committee reports. Sure. Thanks. All right. Anything else? All right. Can I get a uh, um, all in favor? Yep, it looks unanimous. Like it's unanimous. So we are all set. Do we have any uh, public input? None that I had heard from in. All right. No public input. So there'll be no discussion of the public input then. The approval of the minutes. Uh, can I get a, uh, a motion to approve? Sure. Len, can I get a second? Yeah. Well, we got some else. And uh, any comments or questions on the minutes? Any issues? All in favor? It looks unanimous to me. Uh, no student representative updates tonight. Okay. So we'll move on to principal updates. Who'd like to start? Here they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll start. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really know. Should I stand here? So just make sure you're close enough to that. Stand up. Yeah, you don't mind. Um, so over the summer, we've been getting Karen Standard up to speed. Um, super excited to have her in the building. Yes. Introduce yourself. Oh, yes, my apologies. Uh, Kaylin Thompson, principal at the high school, middle school. Um, yeah, so we've welcomed Karen. Her and I have been working almost every day together uh, on updating handbooks and things like that. Um, we sent home welcome packets a couple weeks ago. Um, we have an orientation for seventh grade coming up on Monday and an orientation for students in ninth grade coming up on next Tuesday. Um, we have an open house on the 29th, and we're also doing sort of a getting ready for the road ahead for juniors and seniors on the 29th as well to introduce them to the guidance staff, myself, Karen, and just like map out what the year will look like. Um, also put in um, several stipend positions for department heads this year. I'm excited about that along with some stipend positions for clubs and advisors to get student engagement a little more this year. Um, so I'm really looking forward to leveraging that student engagement and also getting that um, input from teachers. Um, so yeah, we're excited. Thank you. I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out. I, I would really like to see us do more in the summer to prepare kids who are coming in, and I think I've said this before, and I'll say it again, um, who are coming in to either seventh grade or particularly, in my opinion, ninth grade, that I really think they need, seventh and eighth grade, middle school has a lot of support, and, and that move into ninth grade is a big step, because suddenly now you're getting credits and you may not pass and you don't get the credit, and, you know, so I just throw that out there that down the road I would like to see us do more in the summer for kids entering into ninth grade. Who would like to go next? Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Simonetti. I'm the new principal at Shrewsbury Mountain School. 
and I've been really quick, quickly getting up to speed. Um, I'm having meetings with community members. I've been able to build some relationships with the faculty who are spending tons of time in their classroom over the summer, like getting ready, ready for kids to come back. Um, we obviously have a like huge focus on sustain sustainability at Shrewsbury. So we're talking about our garden. We're talking about working together with a community member to plant some chestnut trees. So we're really focusing on bringing education to the outdoors and bringing the kids learning into the building and out of the building. So it's really exciting. Um, we have a special back to school meet and greet with our teachers um, on Monday, August 29th. So we're taking some of our building time to welcome families back into the building. So families are gonna come in and be able to visit their classroom and see where their kid's name is, where they're sitting in the class. And the, the teachers are really excited about bringing the community back inside the school. A really good like post-COVID type of welcoming for our community. Um, we are also gonna be opening up our doors um, for the Four Winds. It's our outdoor education program. They're doing a training I think it's September 8th, and they're going to use our gym to do that, which is exciting. And I'm going to host a Coffee with Kristen moment. So you guys are all welcome to come. So anyone in the community, any parent, any school board member, come on down, have some coffee <laughs> up on the mountain with me. So we're just trying to really build relationships and build trust, and we're really excited for kids to come in the door. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm Jane Richards. I'm the new principal at Clarendon Elementary. Um, so we have been busy all summer at Clarendon. Um, we had hosted the ESY program there. Uh, the district summer camp uh, happened where I got to meet a lot of kids who then informed me, hey, you're the new principal, but I don't go to your school. <laughs> um, which was great, though, because they were still really friendly. Um, our building has just been kind of all of us as well, kind of cleaning around those, um, around those kiddos. and. Our custodians have been amazing in getting that done. Uh, we've also had a lot of PTO events this summer. So we had a movie night, uh, which drew some Clarendon people and as well as some neighboring communities. Um, so they came and sat outside and got to enjoy uh, Monsters, Inc. together. Uh, we had a touch a truck event last weekend and we had people from Casella's. Um, Mr. Adams brought his tractor and some baby goats. Um, which were a hit. Mm. The fire department joined us um, and a number of other. Um, we had 802 Ghostbusters, that was also a big hit, and some vendors that came to um, support us. And we also have a fundraiser for PTO coming up in September at Chipotle. So let you know if you want to go out to dinner and help support your local school, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Um, our teachers are also getting ready for the start of the year. Um, really proud of the staff who've just taken the time that they've needed to recharge and they're coming back in as they're ready to get ready for the new year. Um, we have a kindergarten family night on Thursday, August 25th, and we have a pre-K family night on Tuesday, August 30th. So our youngest, littlest learners are coming in to get familiarized with their teachers in the building. The kindergartners get to take their first bus ride, which is really exciting. Um, so we're looking forward to that and then just planning for the year ahead. We're looking at kind of um, making sure school safety plans are in place and um, just focusing on staff and student wellness. Uh, we have PBIS program that hasn't been updated since 2013 and one of my passions is PBIS, which is positive behavior interventions and supports. So I'm trying to make that a school-wide um, push this year. Uh, and yeah, we're just excited for a new school year. We'll have. Uh, back to school night or open house sometime in September, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we've got Dan and Maureen Dan, you go next. So I'm ready. Can you hear me all right? Sure. Okay. So we have over 70 kids returning in the fall, which is a pretty good size for the building. Take a photo of It's going to be... It's going to be uh, pretty crowded. Uh, the building's been clean. The floors have been waxed. It looks really good. Jean did a great job. Jean Reinhardt. Um, our new slide has been installed. The materials are ordered for the teachers. The schedules are distributed. The uh, welcome letter has been sent home. The uh, pollinator garden has been refurbished. The uh, 
We felt playground is currently being refurbished and we're expecting our chips for the week of the 29th. Um, our meet and greet is going to be on Monday the 29th. And the only thing we're waiting for is the um, painting to be completed. It was started. They're touching up the painting on the uh, trim on the front of the building. The internal, the painting inside, I believe, is finished. And we're positioned and ready to open up on the 31st. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Dan Betts, the principal of Longford. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep, you're good. Cool. Um, so, Longford, uh, we, we've had quite a few students there and not enough classrooms for all of the teachers. And so there's been some sharing going on. And I think one of the challenges that I have personally witnessed and pretty much everyone else is that that can get uh, difficult, especially if you're an art teacher and you're major into projects that are hands-on and uh, using clay, ceramic stuff, so where I would see Tammy walking down the hall with like two carts, one in front of her, one behind her, and try to get from one class to the next. So we tried opening up space for her last year, more of a shared space, but we've done uh, quite a bit of shifting inside the building. I shared, I think, with a couple board members at the uh, end of last year about it, but some more things have kind of fallen into place, so uh, art is going to have their own room. Uh, we've opened up a couple spaces for our special educators to have their own space. Not necessarily a full-size classroom, but enough room for them to be able to run in small groups, and some of the other work they do will be pushed into the general ed classrooms anyway. Um, and then we uh, tore down a wall, so we created from two closet spaces, a solid room for our speech and language pathologist. So she'll be able to uh, work with some kids in, in her own space. Um, and then we also have another room in the office that was kind of a staff room with the copier and mailboxes. Um, and we have moved those mailboxes to the staff lounge area, the copier, we slid into our actual admin assistant's office and opened that space so it's kind of a reset room or a place for students to kind of um, regroup if they need that time and not necessarily be in the public's eye. So uh, we're kind of looking forward to, to implementing that and also just really using every square inch of space that we've got at Wallingford. So, um, so that's all good. We on Monday the 29th have our ice cream social and back to school night. So at 5.30 we'll have the hungry cow coming out and serving ice creams for the students. And then uh, we partnered with Cheryl Manieri with ASB and our PTO um, to where we'll have some kind of individually wrapped ice creams that aren't quite as expensive for the rest of the adults because you know, everyone's deserving of ice cream. Um, but it'll be a good time for us to hang out outside. The weather is uh, welcoming, and if not, we'll move it into the gym and just socialize and catch up and um, hopefully be a little bit closer to people's bubbles and be open as we've got a lot of COVID stuff behind us. Um, and then we'll head off to the classrooms. Teachers will be doing a couple sessions, so families that have more than one kid can at least pump from one session to another and just kind of get the gist of what the year's looking like, what the curriculum they're going to have access to, um, and get to know their, their kids' teachers. So looking forward to that. And I know I brought up the leadership today, but I'm all already starting to see my email um, explode from the summer silence. So teachers, I can tell, are excited to get back. And some of them have blatantly said that in their messages. As I've been sending calendar invites for a certain map uh, staff training and stuff like that. So it's good. I feel that everyone's refreshed, rejuvenated, and ready to go. And so we're really looking forward to this next school year that's going to be normal. Don't say that. <laughs> Knock on wood. Yeah. I think it's safe to say our, our principals have been working all summer, pretty much. I mean, they get some vacation time here or there, but 
they've been working hard and it's getting to be go time. Uh, time. The next few weeks are going to be a lot of work and I, I am proud of the leaders in our buildings and the work that they're doing this summer. We are proud of our schools and we're excited for the year to start. Good. Thank you everybody. Appreciate it. So uh, now we'll move on to guidance mental health update. Last year we started a little bit by putting information out through advisories. Uh, one of our PLC goals this year is to really strengthen our advisories at the middle school and high school level. And so to get that common messaging through advisories from the guidance department, uh, we're going to hone in on that, on that a little bit more. Um, we're starting to put out a, a monthly newsletter. Uh, you saw one last April um, and we put one out in July. We're going to continue to do that just to make sure all information is kind of getting out in one place to, to the community um, and that they're aware of upcoming events and deadlines. Um, last year, uh, last school year in March, we put up the program of study on the guidance website. I also put that information out through advisories and asked advisory teachers to have their students look through it. Um, and we also um, sort of as like a progress sort of update on schedules and things like that. When I came on, the summer that I came on, so that was last summer, um, the, our guidance staff was still working on schedules in the month of August and completing them. This past school year, we were able to get out all high school schedules by the end of the month of May um, so that students had a chance to look at their schedules, meet with school counselors, um, and then have like a pre-ad drop period at the end of the last school year. So that there's progress there. There's still work that needs to be done around that process. I'd like to get more family involvement prior to those being made. Um, that was some of the feedback we got. But um, yeah, and so we will still have the ad drop period um, for the first 10 days of school, but students last school year got to see their schedules prior to going to the summer um, and got a chance to meet with counselors. So that's some progress on that end. Um, the second goal for the, the school counseling department, the guidance department, is to continue to clarify procedures and making staff and students aware of those procedures. We did a lot of sort of internal work last school year and then the, the, our guidance counselors were in over the summer looking at forms, updating them as needed. Um, so things around our ad drop period have been updated so we have a common procedure for that. Uh, that involves communication with families. It involves um, communication with teachers so that kids are meeting with teachers and having that conversation as well. Um, flexible pathways, some of that has been updated. Um, these also, you know, we started communicating these through advisories last school year. Uh, the school counseling department hosted several uh, grade level information sessions throughout the year to talk about graduation requirements, um, new procedures, and things like that. Um, we also did, uh, I can't remember, in May, Jody and I hosted um, a graduation requirement slash program of study night where families could come in and ask questions. Um, and we're still just, all these three goals, there's growth that needs to be done, obviously, and, th and that's why they're priorities this year. So um, still, still working on those, those systems. I think that one is one that will make our, our guidance department more effective and efficient. So um, if you have solid procedures and people know about them. Our third is um, making sure students have access to both crisis and social emotional uh, support along with future planning. Um, and I, I definitely saw a huge sort of uptick of the social emotional needs of students last school year. Um, but to, 
to work on making sure we balance both and we support the needs of our students. Um, things we did last year that we'll continue to do, uh, we pre-scheduled meetings with seniors and juniors throughout the school year individually, but then also hosted workshops <coughs> around topics like the common app essay so we did some workshops with both juniors and seniors around that during the school day and resume building and things like that um, this year to help continue that work to support both SEL uh, the SEL side of things and the future planning um, we have moved Kevin St. Ange um, who is a mental health counselor from being special <coughs> ed funded to general ed funded um, and have placed him upstairs in the guidance wing so last year, Cheryl and Dia were um, not only doing the future planning, but also sort of that day-to-day -day pop up of social emotional needs. Now those social me uh, emotional needs that pop up throughout the school day will be directed to Kevin, while Cheryl and Dia will be focusing more on the academic and future planning piece. Um, I do, we, in the, the purpose of clarity and like trying to get roles and expectations. I did print out, um, and I'll give this to you and I can share it with the rest of the board. I didn't bring my laptop, but um, we have um, Cheryl and Dia's sort of lists of responsibilities. And uh, obviously one page doesn't cover all the things they do throughout the school day. Um, but just to give you some background, information about things they do um, throughout the school day. So Cheryl case manages the the front end of the alph alphabet and Dia does the, the end of the alphabet M through Z. Um, there's senior events, junior events, dual enrollment, uh, anytime a student comes to shadow, um, facilitating CSPs, credit accounting, attending 504s, I, EST IEPs, awards night, scholarship, um, standardized test planning, orientations, step up days, college fairs, uh, Stafford schedules, gear up, um, and then at the end it says suicidal ideations as needed, but those will go to Kevin first, and then social emotional needs as needed, but those will be directed to Kevin first as well. Um, So feel free to look over that if you have questions. Um, and then just on another end of things that we, d we are putting into place this year to support uh, the future planning and the social emotional needs, we have a dean of students um, who's funded through ESSER. Um, and she is Stacy Fisk, who is uh, going to be supporting the day-to-day -day, uh, implementation, implementation of guidance. Um, procedures and things like that. She has a very strong background. She worked very closely with me last year on, on, on um, making those procedures and systems work. Um, we have an <laughs> academic intervention coordinator who's focusing on attendance. And then we also have a behavior interventionist who will support with the social emotional aspects of things. So um, sort of an overview of what we saw last year and what we're trying to do to make sure kids get what they need um, whether it's um, just the day-to-day -day support or thinking ahead for the future. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Dumb question. Um, no questions at all. I know. I appreciate that. Do Cheryl and Dia, are they 7 through 12? They are 7 through 12, and it's interesting. Um, so there are certain, like, parts of their, like, for example, scheduling. Yeah. For 7 through 12, because of the options and how it all works, it makes sense to just have one person sort of doing that. And that was me last year. It's Karen this year. So Karen, and I should shout out to, there are a few middle school t uh, teachers. I see Kelly Stubbins is on. She was <laughs> phenomenal, so I'm just going to give her a shout out. If you can hear me, Kelly. Um, she was answering questions all summer about supporting. She met with elementary school teachers. Uh, to get information about them uh, coming up and, and really 
did a huge heavy lifting on, on the pre-schedule and then all schedule changes throughout the summer go through Karen. So that aspect of things is sort of off of Cheryl and Dia's plate. They focus primarily on the high school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? I think you can tell that the Mill River staff have been busy trying to clarify what next year is going to look like. It's awesome. We're getting there. Work to be done, but we're, we're, we're making progress. Never ending battle. <laughs> is the board comfortable with excusing our principals at this point? Is that reasonable Please. by me? Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Yeah. You'll be back. <laughs> So now we shall move on to oh, and that's me. Board meeting yearly schedule. Get get that coming. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so this is this is. Back up one second, sure. real quick. Do we have a good way to measure our students' mental health in relation? Great to question. Others. Like, like other say schools, other or schools, or other districts, other states. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it because we didn't, but we will. Yeah, and we started. <laughs> so we've always had the YRBS, the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey. Yep. Um, but what we were seeing last year was concerning. And so we talked about it um, as a leadership team, and we decided that we were going to give a social emotional survey to our kids three times last year very, very short. Um, I think like seven or eight questions. Yeah, that was all just it was. To, yeah. Just to do some check-ins. Um, and actually, the elementary one that we used were pulling questions from the panorama. And so, a lot of the questions that we're now thinking about using for the survey work that we're doing, including with panorama, will continue to do that measurement. And, and the thing we get there is nationally normed data. So we can look and say, you know, student sense of belonging. That was one question we asked three times last year. Um, and our data didn't shift a lot throughout the year, um, interestingly. It was, it was a challenging year for a lot of reasons. But we just saw that data in it shifting or not. If we ask those questions to our students this fall, we'll see that data and we'll see where we line up with other schools. So we'll know, you know, are we roughly in the same boat that everybody's in? Are we worse? Are we better? And I think that's good information for us to have. You know, a baseline is a baseline, but being able to compare, um, I think, gives us better context. Um, Got it. And yeah. Nick, I would just add, there's data just, um, and we've, we've talked about this a little bit before, but the amount of major crises, like uh, suicidal ideation mm -hmm. assessments mm -hmm. that our counseling staff had to do last year are about 400% more mm -hmm. um, than, mm -hmm. like, comping the year before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so there is data that things are worse than they used to be, um, but we're hoping that that was a place in time reaction to some really traumatic events. Yep. And you know, regardless, we have so many plans in place to just be proactive. Great question. <clears throat> uh, so annual board meeting schedule, this is something that I had been working on uh, with Andrea uh, Matt joined us one day and we sat down and as board chair and vice chair, we, we went over this together. Uh, they made some suggestions for tweaks uh, and I brought it to the leadership team. So we've looked at it, uh, all the principals, and we made some, some tweaks and some shifts. Uh, this started at basically from policy, or looking at all our policies and seeing all the things that are required annually in policy. Some of these we do, some of these we haven't. Uh, for a little while. Uh, so I think it was, it's a good starting point to go, hey, if they're required in policy, we should probably get them on the calendar and do them. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I think the problem is not that folks didn't want to give these presentations. I think the problem is we get busy and we set an agenda and there are things to do. And, and well, we did talk about professional development. So, you know, wasn't a full presentation, but we did talk about it. So. I think being a little more formal and setting a schedule will do a little better justice to these items. These are things that we would generally cover at given points in time, but they weren't like a specific uh, presentation per se, if that makes sense. So you take 10 things that policy 
requires from us. And actually, I take that back. Nine are in policy. One is in our board goals, uh, five-year facilities plan. And then you take some building level presentations uh, and you get about 11 of those. Uh, feedback we had was that hearing from buildings twice a year would be very meaningful. So actually, you can, you can start doubling that number. That gives us a lot. That really gives us a lot. If we want to hear from each school twice about how things are going in their classrooms, and you want to hear from departments at the high school about how things are going for them, and you want to hear that twice, and then you work in sports four times at logical points for seasons starting and ending, and then you put in all our, all our uh, required in policy ones, we get a pretty full schedule for the year. I'm not bringing this to the board asking for action because I, I don't think it makes sense to set a schedule and approve the schedule and then good luck if anything ever changes. We gotta reapprove it, we gotta, I, I think this is a great thing to use as a guide. And when we go to agenda build, we go, oh yeah, who were we gonna hear from next meeting? Okay, great, oh, is there something else that popped up that we need to do too? Do we need to shift that a meeting? Uh, but that we at least have a starting point. Uh, and I feel pretty strongly that the expectation on administrators is going to be higher. Because as I said in the past, you shouldn't just be hearing from me. You should be hearing from more people around data and how things are going in our schools. That's a shift in expectation. You heard wonderful things from principals today around how they're prepared for the start of the year. Mm -hmm. In the future, the bar is going to be higher because they're, they're going to be expected to come and work with their staff to show you how things are going in their K2 group and what's the data and the work <coughs> that supports that. How are things going in three through six? What's the data and what's the work that supports that? Um, so I have to give them lead time on that. So, so part of my rationale for this too is if this is a starting point and we've mapped out the year, then they've got that lead time and they know when that work is coming to the board so they can be fully prepared. Um, do we have a copy of that, Brian? Uh, I did not. I meant to print copies and I absolutely no, forgot. No, no, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, you, you can just email it to us. I will send it to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, what I would ask is if the board has any, any thoughts tonight, I think it's absolutely worth entertaining a conversation. Is this crazy? Does it make sense? Is there something that's jumping out at you really quickly that we've forgotten about? Um, I know you don't have a copy in front of you. Sorry about that. But since this is not up for action or approval, this is something that we, we don't have to follow. So if you have feedback a week from now, you can get me that feedback. We can, we can revise as needed as we're going, if that makes sense. Um, there I, was a, it came up, holy cow, a year, uh, last year sometime, mm -hmm. about a risk yeah, management. it's on here. How oh, about okay. that? <laughs> March stands in charge. Risk, risk management audit report. You're always a little ahead of where I am, Len. Always a little ahead of me. Well, things pop into my head. Well, you you, you have more experience than me, so. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. <laughs> uh, but I know it was an issue yeah. when we were talking yeah. about yeah. Um, another thing happening, yeah. and had we had yeah. a risk management yeah. assessment. It's on there. Okay, good, great. Audits on there, budgeting. Budgeting is worked in around the time we normally do budgeting. And we do that, but we, we haven't necessarily scheduled it specifically to be, here's the budget presentation. We do that work. Uh, but I'm shifting towards why don't we make it a little more formal? Make sure we're doing everything we should be doing. I've tried to spread out that we're gonna hear from a department from the high school, then we hear from an elementary. So we're kind of going back and forth to work through the year. Uh, I put professional development at the, at the start of the year. Jody spoke to professional development uh, in her curriculum update. Now it'll be more formal and we'll do that at the beginning of every year. I put the guidance one on here too because uh, Kaylin was talking, speaking to the guidance aspect today. We would hear from the guidance department again in April, and the expectation would be that some of our guidance folks are sharing too. Because again, you need to be hearing from more than a couple of people about how things are going. Uh, I, I 
I do work around here, but there are a lot of other people who do far more important work, and you need to hear from them too about how things are going. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Reasonable? What, what about kids? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, in the past, we did presentations where we had kids participating. Yeah. Uh, and we had a conversation today with our leadership team. And while, while we love our students, and that's why we're here, we want to be really careful that we're not just putting kids in front of the board and having them do fun things and everybody right. feels good, but you're not seeing the work. Right. Um, I, we can revisit that. If that's something that's really important to have, we can revisit that. Um, I guess for me, it would be more important to make sure that we have student representation. On the board. On the board. Okay, okay. And I wonder too, uh, if we need to be more mindful of when are we showcasing our student work? And we, we that oh, should be outside of board meetings it too. Depends upon the topic. Yeah. To have them come in and give a presentation depends upon mm. what it is we want to probe or ask or question or survey. Mm. Uh, it all has relevance mm. or perhaps doesn't have any relevance. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wonder Clarendon did a wonderful evening last year where they showcased a bunch of student work and everybody was invited. You know, may, if we rely on board meetings as the place where students showcase their work, maybe that's too small. Maybe we should be doing more to showcase student work and invite the board to that, yeah. if that makes sense. I think I got a comment from somebody. Liz. Yeah, I put my hand up. Thanks, folks. Um, what I'm hoping for is um, Kalen, I think it was Kalen said, um, there would be a monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm hoping that all of the school's mm. newsletters will show or, or highlight for us mm. the events that our students are doing that we can attend mm -hmm. to, to see their work. Because just as a parent, you know, I'm a little hesitant to say to, you know, our younger students, oh, we want you, um, you know, come visit with our board and showcase XYZ, I, I'm hesitant to add anything to their plate, to their schedule, to their workload, especially in the evening. Okay. I just assume, you know, that we make more of an effort to show mm -hmm. up at their scheduled events. Mm -hmm. That's my thought process. Yeah, thanks I for agree. sharing. And I, uh, thank you for bringing that up because that is a shift from what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's worth worth exploring. I think it's also when we're looking at that is, you know, we it happened to work out that we could have a board meeting the yeah. night before that that happened. Yes. But it's like if, not if we case. if we can plan it out and so, and that we're not intruding on the like intended. Yeah. It's hard, you know, yeah. if they're having something that's yeah. in the gym. It's then yeah. hard to have yeah. a board meeting at the same time. But it's like if there is an event that can be scheduled in a cross-pollinating way, mm -hmm. then we should make an effort to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And if we have the plan you know, set out in stone beforehand, either because mm -hmm. the teacher or the principals or somebody already knows this event is happening you know, October 30th, does it work for us to have our board meeting in that? So I think the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the question that I would have for this schedule mm -hmm. is, we're talking to Claren in, in November. Mm -hmm. Do they have an event in November? Yeah, good if question. If they do, can it be yeah. on the same <coughs> night? If it can't, that's fine. But like, mm -hmm. make it make sense that we're going to a school. Yeah, just so that because it is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to take this opportunity to tell Brian that I really like this rotation schedule because it hits all of the things we say we're going to hit. And it's just, it's a nice rotation of, of topics that we, we say we're going to talk about. And it gives, it gives folks, you know, equity in, in talking time, you know, to present their, their workload, really. And I think it is, it is, thank you for that, Liz, it is showcasing the work. We're, we're hopefully hearing from our educators, here's how our students are doing, 
here's what we're doing to support them. And I think that's what we need more of. Um, I, 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 I love that idea of let's, let's not just forget about the students and how their work ties into it, but let's be mindful about how we can, we can uh, figure out some logistics <coughs> to make that cross-pollination happen. I wonder, I kind of want to go back to my leadership team and say, our leadership team, sorry. I want to go back to our leadership team and say, hey, do you think there would be some events that this would work? And then I come back to the board and say, hey, do you want to schedule some meetings at buildings? And we, we can kind of, we can add to this plan uh, in that way, if that's reasonable. Okay. Sounds good. I appreciate the feedback. If you, if you think of something, I did share it with everybody so you have a copy of it. Uh, again, this is a working document and we'll keep coming back to it as we agenda build throughout the year. So if you have thoughts, uh, feel free to shoot them my way and we'll, we'll think about it. Thanks, Brian, for taking the time to do yeah, that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Came, yeah. Out, came out good so far. Yeah. So next we will move on to special education vendor contract. Number one, select a remote services vendor to serve as an SLP um, or a speech language pathologist for the school year. Um, unfortunately, I cannot come to you to do that until such time that I have a definite price of what that is going to cost the district. Now, the thing with that price is, it is dependent on which state my candidate lives in. So for example, if I'm given an SLP from New York, it might cost us $90 an hour. If I get one from California, it might cost us $105 an hour. The problem is right now, I don't have a candidate. Um, I did interview one last Friday. That person is not coming on board with us. Um, I have another interview with a different candidate this coming Friday. But again, the problem is I can't come to you with a motion until I can give you a price. <laughs> so um, what I can tell you is this. Um, when I do come to you for that motion, I will be asking you to approve um, the same remote services provider that we approved last year. That was Boco Vision. Um, it's just a matter of me needing to give you a figure of what's going to cost you for the year. So. Right now, I'm a little hung up. Um, so we're gonna have to, I think, table this until I can get something else. Um, and I don't know when that'll be, if it'll be the next meeting. Um, fingers crossed, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. And, and so. an, an interesting place to be, if you saw the stuff I sent around to the board members and the leadership team, statewide, midsummer there were openings for 26.7 speech language pathologists in the state. Wow. You know, now it's starting to sound like finding people across the country who are willing to give us yeah. virtual services is as hard to yeah. find, which is, you know, yeah. um, challenging, challenging. Hey Coral, yeah, is, it, is, it the same yeah, is it the same problem with a virtual uh, SP, SP uh, as uh, uh, in service? Uh, having to have the dual mm. yes it, yes yep um, that's a good question so let's say I get someone from California they have to be dual licensed to practice in Vermont so I have to hurry up and get them through the hurdles of our own AOE so that I can make sure that, that they're allowed to practice here so yeah it's in, there's in, a lift there and how many states, and it's okay if you don't know the answer, how many states require dual licensing? That I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if Vermont's mm. being difficult in Vermont this. Vermont is the most difficult from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anecdotally, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Vermont is one of the most, uh, they have the highest hoops to jump through. I have definitely heard that repeatedly. From I, wonder, I wonder if that's something that we as a board write to somebody and say, you realize that 
as nationally as a state, this is a position that's hard to fill. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, um, many of you remember, so my predecessor, um, Cheryl Leary, who had this job before me, was a licensed SLP. She had practiced for decades, literally, and um, she was an excellent advocate for that fight, and that was back when she, that was back, you know, 2013, 14, when she had this position. Um, and I know at that time, when she was, was really having those conversations, um, she even struggled to get momentum with it, and, and here we sit, 2022, even, even in an even worse predicament. So, yeah, I don't know, Nick. I, so it, so it sounds like at a minimum we need to pencil you in for five minutes of discussion for next meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yep. Just in case. Cool. We'll so, and, <laughs> and, and maybe we should think about, Coral, if you could think about um, putting together a letter yeah. that, that we might, as a board, be willing to sign on to to send to our legislators. I, I just throw yeah, that I don't out know there. how we advocate for that, but there's got to be yeah. something. Yeah. There's, there's, 20, to there's yeah. 26. Yeah, it's not just us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can, we, yeah, I, I you know, part of, a, part of the job that we have as leaders is to be advocates, and I'm happy to take on that charge. It wouldn't necessarily be something I'd get to uh, tonight, but, yeah. but. Um, I, I wonder. Right, the numbers. <laughs> what I what I sent out was VSA. I wonder if VSBA is doing any work on because somebody somebody lobbied to have some things put in place like being able to bring retired educators back. So I think VSA yeah. and VSBA are are aware of this being an issue. I I don't know how much they are aware of the SLP piece specifically though. Yeah. Is this, is it a do, is it a policy or is it like is it the Department of Education, or is it yeah, a statute, law? Yes, statute. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's in statute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And SLP is uh, one of those positions that's not only educational; it's clinical. Yeah. So these are folks that could also practice medically in nursing homes, geriatric centers. Um, they might work with infants in a NICU, um, and so that is why there is that dual licensure component in the state, but it is in statute. And, and I can understand holding ourselves to a, a high mm -hmm. level. Yeah. But, uh, if, right? if we're if we're the outlier in the country, which I mm -hmm. don't know if any of us can answer that, where yeah. where's the the line? Do we just step down one notch <laughs> and say, hey, at least we're on par, and now you can get teachers? <laughs> I know that um, it's funny because I you know having done these interviews with candidates from all around. It's really funny because their eyes get super big when I start telling them what hoops they're going to have to mm. jump through to practice. <coughs> and they're like, literally, like, that is crazy. Like, why would I even? Like, one person literally said to me, that is the mm. craziest amount of work I've ever heard mm. of. Yeah. So, mm. um, yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, but we're going we're gonna to carry forward and see. We, you know, the other part of this coin, though, is We've had years where we've had so many candidates that we can't even choose because they're all awesome. I've seen that happen not that long ago. So some of this is timing, some of this is just the ebb and flow of the current. Um, but yeah, we are getting down to the wire, which I think we all realize. So yeah. I will certainly keep you posted, but I am happy to you know, see what I can do about crafting a letter that perhaps they want to take a look at and sign on to. That'd be great. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep, thanks. All right. So next we will move on to math textbook purchasing. Yes. So um, that is a request that I am bringing to you. Uh, if you will remember at the last board meeting, I brought to you a request for the Eureka Square purchase, and that was for kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, we also want to bring to you a request for purchasing of math textbooks and an online curricular resource for grades 9 through 12. So this has been a request from our high school math department for many years and we just didn't have the extra funding for it and it is one of those situations where with the ESSER funding um, we are able to look at this. Um, 
the math department has had teacher editions of their of their textbooks for a couple years now and they have been printing out or making everything for kids so it's important to know that they don't actually currently have a textbook for math <laughs> for our high school kids we feel that providing that to them will really help them to provide high quality curriculum um, so you can see on this bid sheet that there's three possible bids um, my request is that we go with CPM, that stands for College Preparatory Mathematics. Uh, you can see that the, the CPM bid is higher than the other two, and so I want to talk a little bit about why that is still um, the request that I'm bringing to you. Um, the first is College Preparatory Mathematics is the program that our high school has been using for many years, and we do feel that cohesion and continuation is important when the teachers still feel it is the best curriculum. Um, the second piece is that absolutely our teachers in the math department feel this is the best curriculum to use for their students. This is what they picked out as, as what they need. Now, I did a little bit of research on this curriculum just to make sure because I'm <laughs> I am not a math teacher. It is <laughs> where I would say it's not my strongest of all of uh, the areas. And um, <coughs> this program goes above and beyond in real life problem solving and collaborative learning. So this, this program is award winning in those ways, that it teaches kids math um, in a way that asks them to sit down in groups and really interact with the problems and each other um, and dive down into math as a real life thing. Um, another key piece of why it is more expensive, so the CPM quote is for a four-year online license, including videos and textbooks. Um, the McGraw-Hill quote, which is about half the cost, is only uh, for textbooks and some online programming, but it's not nearly um, as complete, and that McGraw-Hill one was for one year. Um, the Savas Learning one, was for five years, but the Savas Learning one does not provide the amount of tier two supports. That's like if a kid is not really understanding what's going on, the extra pieces to that. So any questions about that, I asked Kaylin to stay because Kaylin is a math teacher. <laughs> um, is this the same or comparable to what we've been printing the last couple of years? So it's the, it's the same company, the same program, but it is better materials because it comes with all of those videos. So, so it's not like we're switching apples and oranges. No, no, we are just getting shinier apples. <laughs> if you think about how often kids have been absent due to a COVID exposure or whatnot, math progresses sequentially, right? And so if a kid's out of your classroom for even a day, you're trying to fill that gap so they can get the next concept. So any type of video supplement really helps our teachers sort of stay on track because they can provide that for students when, when uh -huh. they're absent. If you've missed division of equations, now you've missed divisions of equations. <laughs> how, how does it mesh with the K through eight that we're, that yeah, we so just bought? They are well aligned. Okay. Um, they are. And so, and then I should point out that this is an into all of these quotes are integrated mathematics. That is our current model here at Mill River. Yeah. So um, the teachers feel strongly about continuing on with that, and that does model our Eureka. Um, Liz, I was just going to make the motion, but Mick, I think you had a comment. I was just going to ask how much of this is ESSER funds versus not. This is all ESSER funding I'm requesting. And again, I want to point out that this is four years worth. So I'm asking once, and I'm not going to come again <laughs> within four years. And I think Adrian also. Adrian? Oh, um, I, I know you're saying that we're, we're supporting, again, integrated math. I remember um, hearing that there was a strong discussion as to whether or not we were going to continue with integrated math. And if we buy these textbooks, we're all in. Integrated math doesn't work for a lot of kids. And I'm curious as to why our teachers are all in when I've been hearing conversations with on the board and, and in other um, situations that integrated math is not what most people are teaching anymore. Yes. Because it leaves kids behind. I mean, how is this different and why are we going all in on this? 
So we did pull the math teachers. It was in May of last year for a full day retreat. It was myself, Kaylin, Brian, I think was in for a little bit of that, um, and the high school math department to talk about that very question of whether to continue on with the integrated programming or go to a more traditional separation of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, um, amongst other things like looking at our student data, our STAR 360 alignment, um, just talking about the future of this programming. Uh, there were a couple things that the math department said that convinced me. Uh, first was they said, how can you judge the veracity of this programming when we haven't been given the textbooks um, to teach the programming, um, which is part of why I'm I pushed forward with looking at this. Another piece was, um, you know, looking at what the research says for student achievement between an integrated program and a more segmented program. And I, cou I could not find leading research one way or the other. There's just. And I would, I would also, Adrian, comment on that as well. So I, I taught, I've taught over a decade in math at middle school and high school level. Um, all sort of the traditional algebra one, geometry, algebra two paths. So when I came to Mill River and found that we were doing integrated, I like searched to, to see if this was actually, try, to try to convince myself. And I, just as Jody said, I couldn't find uh, research that really uh, weighed one way or the other. It really talked about the, the curriculum that is provided and the teachers that are, are providing that curriculum. Um, so I have one more question. Um, as a parent of somebody who had a, a math disability, one of the conversations that I had every year as part of his 504 was the unsuitability of integrated math for kids that have difficulty with math, period. And I was told at every meeting, and I know this is a personal piece, but I'm, I'm sort of horrified that we're putting this much money into it, and I'm sorry I have to speak up. Um, I was told at each one, yes, these kids should not necessarily be taught into, with, through integrated math. They don't follow that spiraling piece very well. They need a more incremental um, sort of thing. So if we're going all in again on integrated math, how are we gonna be supporting our students that don't get math easily. And I, I'm very serious with this question because we left a lot of kids behind. Um, and and we, because we didn't teach two programs because we couldn't afford to. And now we are going all in on something that did not work for some kids, a fair number of kids. I need to be convinced. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I will give the answers I have. And you know, you might tell me I need to go back and come back with more, and that's fine too. Um, so some of the answers I have is just advocate for the work that has been done um, in our schools in the last five years at the middle and the high school level on really creating programming <coughs> to support students who struggle in math. Uh, so Kelly Stebbins, who might still be on here, um, and Kim Moore worked, I think it was two or three years ago, to sit down with the seventh and eighth grade classes and to look at scores um, and assessments and create needs-based based classes where it's not, they're not looking to say, oh, in seventh grade you are gonna be this lower level math for the next six years, but oh, you need extra help in these specific areas and we're gonna go really hard and deep in these specific areas to catch you up to your peers. And so doing that differentiation of that data work at the middle school level is one way that they're really looking to support. Um, another piece is, um, the, the high school level courses, so Erin Danner teaches a, a two period course for high schoolers who struggle in math called Interconnections. Interconnections yep. And that is very much meant to work at the pace of the students who take that course in a way that makes math really, truly accessible. Um, we do offer personal finance for a math credit. Um, and this year it'll be taught by a math certified teacher and so that's an opportunity for much more practical math that can count in math. Um, and then the, the last piece I would just add is, I, we've had that conversation, you and I, before, and I, I hope you know that equity is a key piece of my value system in education. Um, so I did some research on whether, which kind of programming could be better with students with math disabilities, and I was not able to find um, research that, that I could really 
pop out to say which one was better. I'm willing to go back and do more though. Could could we hit Coral way in on this? Yeah, yep, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so Adrian, when you're talking about spiral curriculum, you're going back to the old days of everyday math um, and programs like that. Um, those programs that spiral, what we mean by spiral is they are programs that will introduce a particular concept or skill and then move very quickly on to a different one and then maybe in a few weeks go back, spiral back to the original. And the idea of those programs was that over time, the student would gain enough exposure that they would eventually come to master whatever that original skill was. Problem with that was for kids with disabilities, that type of curriculum is destructive. Um, that, and I can absolutely show you research on that. Um, and so typically for kids with disabilities, these spiral sorts of programs like Everyday Math was, um, we don't use them. Um, however, what Jody is talking about has, um, it is not really a spiral at all. Um, that particular curriculum or that program that she's talking about has a very clearly defined scope and sequence. So it is, it is progressive. It does build on, you know, for example, you're going to introduce a skill and then you're going to build on it. And theoretically, that student is going to get more time with it. Where the integration comes in is that you are teaching many more skills at once. Um, now, on the side of it where it comes into where, where we have students with disabilities accessing these classes, Here's a thing, uh, Adrian, when you were talking about kids like your child being veered away from those classes, my heart was pounding. <laughs> uh, number one, because that is so inappropriate. Um, that is like the most inappropriate thing I've heard in a long time. It, it just is. Um, however, what should be happening with classes like, um, like the ones that you and Jody are discussing is heavy, hardcore, modifications and accommodations for those kids. For example, the child with a math disability, that content should be modified in a way that either the child is being exposed to less of it overall, or they're spending much more time on a particular skill set. However, I think that people are struggling with accommodations and modifications and how to weave those in successfully into a class like integrated or, and again, I know we're talking about maybe years ago or, or whatever, I don't know how long we're talking about, but evolution should be that we should be accommodating and modifying that content for that kid such that they are very much in that class and getting a scope and sequence that's appropriate. But spiral curriculums in general have been found to be pretty destructive for, for kids with math disabilities. And, have any and I'll say I appreciate the discussion. If we don't, if we don't have the dialogue and we don't bring things up, uh, just because we want to do things quickly and get out of here, then we're not doing our due diligence. So thank you for bringing that up, Adrian. Are you going off over there? <coughs> Where's the boat? A boat. So. <laughs> The math teacher I consider the strongest and most vocal advocate for students who struggle in math believes so passionately in this program um, that, you know, I, I consider myself a curriculum specialist. I consider myself humble enough to know that I am not the expert in all the things. She is somebody I would consider an expert in this. Okay. Thank you. So... Um, does anyone want to make a motion? Sure, I will. Um, Liz? I think it's Len going to make it, because I can make it. You can second it. Okay. <laughs> right, so Len, go ahead. Oh, I got to... I would make a motion that we accept the bid from... 
$41,997.20. Want me to write that down or hand you my page? <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Do I have a second? All in favor? First, sorry, is there any, any discussion first? All right, all in favor? All opposed? So, looks like the uh, yeas have it. I um, think you have to oh, yeah. actually yeah. poll people if you yeah. have okay. a phone. All right, so, so, roll, so we'll do a roll call. Doug. Aye. Josh. Aye. I'm an A. Aye. Len. Aye. Okay, Nick. Aye. Liz. Aye. Bruce. Jeremy Bruce. Bruce, are you yay or nay? <laughs> okay. Adrian? Um, I don't think I have ever said no to a curriculum question before, but I'm a nay. Sorry. Hey, Bruce. Are you yay or nay? You're on mute. Does that have a loud dog? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the A's have it. So next we will move on to uh, committee reports and personnel. It's you, Lynn. <laughs> We did not have a personnel committee <laughs> meeting tonight, but we do have some contracts for you. And Brian, keep me on track if I... I will. I'll try. Go off track. Um, I'd like to make a motion for um, a teacher contract for Zach Allen uh, as a teacher K-12 phys ed and health education 1.0 FTE and I make that a motion and I'll second that discussion former student comes with glowing recommendations in the community good what where can I ask where uh, high school oh okay yep we had a last minute shift okay Any other discussion? All those in favor, aye. Opposed, nay. Abstain. Thank you. Second one. Uh, this is <clears throat> for support staff contract for Joshua Bowen. Um, educational support staff, 1.0 full-time equivalency. And I would make that a motion. And I will second that. Thank you, Liz. Discussion? Another former student, actually. That's, yes. that's been a trend I, a couple of meetings they, now. They yep. Keep coming yep. back. Mm. I don't know, there's something weird about that. But anyway. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you very much. Next one, uh, for a letter of employment for site director in the after school program for Shannon Phillips. This was sort of, if I'm remembering correctly, yep. this was, uh, it's a point, it's a 0 0.4 full-time equivalency and she's doing it's the after school program. So she is still a Clarendon teacher during the day, yeah. but then after school she'll be running that whole program. Okay. Nice. So uh, I would I make that a motion to offer her a contract, um, 0 0.4 full time equivalency for the site director after school program at Clarendon. I'll second that. Thank you, Liz. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay, and then the last we have um, is a series of middle school coaches and elementary coaches from Kim. Um, and I don't think we need to go over them, excuse me, individually. Um, but basically it's middle, 
middle school boys soccer, Anthony Kange. Middle school girls soccer, Brittany Blanchard. Fifth and sixth elementary soccer coach, Nate Rudisill. Third and fourth elementary coach, Allie Wilson. And varsity assistant football coach, Zach Allen. Yep, same one. Ah, okay. So I would make a motion that we offer these folks contracts. I'll second that. I'll second that. Thank you, Liz. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And I think that's all I have, Brian. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yep. I do have one question. I think I can be right. Um, do we know if all of the um, sports coaching positions are filled for the year? I think one's not. Okay. I think one. I don't think it's more than that. Okay. It could be. All right. I'm just curious. It, it would be nice yeah. to have Kim come in and talk to us. I know she does it every year. Yep. Um, but in the fall, September. just to give us numbers and. and yeah, tentatively. Uh, I'll I'll let you know if we're missing anybody. She's coming uh, second September meeting, so maybe not the next, but the one after. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. That's she all was gonna Don't she you? was gonna bring Brittany the elementary uh, AD, AD, so we can hear about that too. Great. Is that everything? All I got. Next, we will move on to policy. Oh, with the personnel schedule. Oh. Oh, I'm yep, sorry. sorry. Yep. Thank you. Um, it will be September 7th, first Wednesday in September. I think it's the 7th. Mm -hmm. September 7th yeah. at 6 p.m. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Josh. All right. So next would be policy. I know um, Andrea is not here. I don't know if she gave a report to anybody or anything. I'm not on that committee, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We met, but we met. Yep. And we reviewed the F, really we reviewed at the Paul F3 policy yep. and really the, it was really our first policy, me, real policy meeting mm -hmm. that we've had. And so just starting looking at F3 brought up the conversation of how we were gonna go through the policies moving forward. Okay. Um, and basically we, the policy, particularly this F3 one, was very convoluted, <laughs> and we had a very simple, straightforward policy uh, through the, I'm not sure, the, the, the BSBA. BSBA. Yeah. 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 And that, we're going to try as, as closely as we can to align our policies, if they have a policy, to be as close to that as possible, so we don't have these very complicated policy things. <laughs> Yeah, Andrea. Oh, I, I had written to a Andrea before, I guess before the last meeting for, for policy, that the um, BSBA is, was working a lot this summer and will have a bunch of policies coming out in September, October, and they weren't completely sure of their timeline. But, um, but they were aware and, and were um, welcoming of us sending the policies that we are prioritizing and telling us whether it's ones that they're working on if we send them a list. Yeah. So that we don't spin yeah. our wheels and invent something that they're going to come out with something yeah. Yeah. in a couple months. Because part of it is that F4 and F8 for our policies, they don't talk, it, I couldn't find anything that talked about it in, in any of their documents. So. Right, I, I understand that. I yeah. just didn't, I, I just. They are willing to, to, to bet our risk and say, oh, we're working on this, or, yeah. or we're not working on this. That so would far. be great. And I, and I appreciate Jody was very helpful. For sure. In, the, awesome. in that meeting. Thank you. I, well, no, it's because it is convoluted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But I think it was good. And I think, I, think we're, I think we're in a place where now, coming to the policies, we should be able to do it much faster. Yeah. Because good. I think part of talking about vision and mission statement and what we want to see the school is, this is one of the things that I think is really hard for us to hold ourselves accountable for. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the way we're accountable is our voters, and our voters don't know if we're like backlogged on policy. So I think we need to move faster on these things. And so, so I think this is, a, we've seemingly had a, a 
a good way to go forward. Well, it sounds like you're on good track right now. But so. I don't know in the next meeting. You know the next meeting, Do you right? know the next meeting? I would say the second Tuesday in September. Which is the 13th. So right. we'll say it's tentative, tentatively <laughs> 5 30. the 13th. 5.30. <laughs> That's 5.30. Guessing in my gosh. 5.30. That's tentatively. <laughs> All right. Next would be uh, Doug, Buildings and Grounds. Yeah, gee, thanks. Um, I believe we also, we all talked about it. We have a problem in Wallingford with a certain amount of uh, um, beyond the normal uh, lead um, in the water that's there. Um, since the time Gary has gone out and they uh, um, worked with the state to take some uh, the, the proper ways of, of checking things out and the state will uh, will hang you up for about one tenth of one millionth percent of, uh, of lead that require a change out and you have a certain amount of time. During that time, we've already, uh, Wallingford has, I think, a three bay sink that is done for um, the making of the foods that are there. Plus there's a smaller one that is uh, just for washing of hands. It's uh, something you'd probably have in the, uh, the normal bathroom at your house. Um, Gary has gone over and we've, we've changed um, a number of the faucets to be more modern. Lead can actually come off from uh, uh, any type of brass that you have on faucets. The advantage of uh, knowing how to take care of that is that we can actually uh, we can make a difference there. And the new faucets are coming through are required by, I think by state law, and I used to know the number, but that you're not allowed to have any type of lead in anything that is made. Um, we now have to purchase uh, different types of, uh, of piping that has to be done that doesn't put through the lead. We have to, the equipment we have to do, the valves, the, uh, um, the circulators, anything that can actually put um, lead into either the kitchen sink or into the, uh, the shower and the bathroom, the tub and stuff. Uh, Gary went over and changed two of the faucets. I think the third one they just decided, decided not to use. Um, and the sink was, was uh, still there. State was asked to go back and to do another testing. And their testing was, although a little better, still not to where it needs to be. It's, it's still coming through there. I'm thinking in my mind what I want to try to do is to uh, go over either, either Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week before um, schools get there. If I can get Gary, um, I might be able to. He's getting kind of... Uh, Nancy to go. He wants to stay here at least until the 9th of September. There's a couple things he wants to make sure he can get them done before he leaves, and then he will be, you know, giving us a salute, and he'll be on on, uh, on retirement. And if he's anything like my retirement, I'm still working all the hours. <laughs> I'm still getting hurt too. Um, so what I'm going to do is go over and check. I want to look to see that if they change these number of things and there's still a problem it's likely it's coming from the piping that's in the building. Um, if there's a way to check the piping coming into the building, uh, whether that's there, it might actually come up as something that's in the uh, town of Wallingford's water system. Um, I, I did a number of years ago. I was in charge of that for about uh, three months and we made some changes, but for the most part it was just repairing what was there. Um, then later on, the well system was bad, so they um, drilled a, a nice one down on the uh, on the vacation area and the uh, the, the um, ball fields and stuff, and then they pump it up to the top. So any of that could actually have enough uh, of a of a kick to cause a problem. There are filters that are made; um, they don't seem to be doing the job. It's a probability if we either got to double up or maybe get a, a better filter that's there. I'm going to talk with Gary before he leaves. He's uh, knowledgeable what's down there. I've got enough knowledge to probably make myself in trouble. But if we can get things done before school starts, that'll be great. If not, they'll have to do, uh, they'll do things in a different way that we were doing. There was a stretch there. We were filling up, uh, filling up pails with water coming out of the small one for the hands because it had no lead whatsoever. Um, the downside is that you can actually get more of a, a danger from uh, biologicals by putting it into a bucket and carrying it from one spot to the next. Um, we can make this work. It's just a matter of some more time. Um, other than that, I haven't called a meeting. I want to try to do that as soon as our new uh, building and grounds guy becomes here. I, as far as I know, he hasn't been in the building to do things. 
I think he's he's been meeting with Gary uh, informally occasionally, so he's yeah, been I'm working in a little bit. He just course. hasn't been here actually officially working. And we yeah. got a question from Adrian. Adrian. Um, Doug, I thought you were going to have a meeting with Gary and the Buildings and Grounds Committee before he left. I was I was really hoping to attend that yeah. to get a handle on how the buildings are all doing to give us a, a you know a, an overlook. You said that for the last. Two, three months. Yeah, actually what uh, what happened there is uh, as soon as school got done, Gary took a two week vacation and was gone there. He came back uh, last week, so he's on his, his third week. I can ask him it's, if it's something he wants to do, that'll be great. And I'd like to bring Tim in at the same time to uh, just go over some things. Tim's gonna need to spend some time figuring out what, um, what certain areas may have issues that he's gonna have to deal with uh, quicker than others. Uh, he seems to be, uh, with it enough to make that to, to make that work, I will try to do that to get him like because he's here for another couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would really stress that I think that would be helpful, well, especially would. since none of us got to meet the new the new guy. Yeah, um, I will do my best to try. I got the uh, next couple of days are sort of quiet, so yeah, I'll, I'll stop in, say hello. And next is Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Hey. I, I saw the plumbing in the kitchen at Wallingford, and it seems like the pipe that feeds the three bay sinks also feeds the hand washing sink. So I was under the impression that Gary was going to change out the three faucets as well as the others. And he didn't do that. He just, he just added the, the pot filler. Well, my, my understanding was that the faucets were changed and then the tests came back and they were still too high then the filters were put on so the faucets were done first to see if the state the state recommended do the faucets test it again then the state said okay try filters now test it again we still didn't meet so the state said okay you know you've done everything you can you know uh, short of ripping up the concrete in the floor and repiping the state and which is something that the state did not tell us to do uh, the everything that Gary has done has been working with the state and cleared by the state so uh, my understanding is that that we have reached a resolution that the state is comfortable with if that makes sense now we're, we're building in grounds to be willing to commit you know twenty thousand dollars to repipe those sinks we could absolutely explore that, but I think that would, that would definitely be something that would be our choice to do and not something that anybody's telling us we have to do at this point in time. Uh, if there is, if there is an official somewhere who, who thinks that what we're doing is not in compliance, uh, Gary's more than willing to have a conversation with them, but we have not interacted with those officials. Uh, that has not come to us uh, through anybody we've been working with with the state. So, so Gary told us that he did all that testing several years ago, not that he did it last year. No, this several, has been a several years ago. This has been a and, process that's been and ongoing. He us, and he also told us he thought it had been solved, but obviously it hadn't. If women were carrying the, the water from the lounge, it's the it's been as far as the state is concerned. We've done what we need to do to be in compliance. Uh, if there was a miscommunication about what that actually meant, you know, that, that's absolutely possible. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I don't think Gary said those faucets are perfect, we're good to go. Um, that's never been anything I've heard. If he said, yes, we've figured out a solution for Wallingford, you know, that, that's reasonable, but I, I can see how that's a general statement that could be, uh, you could understand that to mean we, those faucets are usable uh, but we've replaced the faucets testing came back high we added the filters testing came back high so working with the state on recommendations uh, we found an alternative way to get water uh, Gary did work on the closer sink to make sure that one was usable uh, my understanding was that actually there was a further a further faucet that was being used until Gary had done some work on the the other sink to make it usable for large pots does that, does that make sense, Bruce? It does, but it doesn't, because I've talked to the health inspector, and he's been concerned for two years. Well, he so can... I need to reach out to Bob Manfredi and say, what do we need to do? 
and, and we are absolutely more than willing to work with any, any officials on things we need to do to be in compliance, but uh, I, I guess I'm surprised that the health inspector hasn't told us we need to do that to be in compliance. Um, who, is, who is Bob Mentrini in terms of the wastewater division, I'm sorry, or potable water division? He's a, he's a food service inspector because he inspects my restaurants. That's the only reason I know the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I think um, in all, in all you know, reality, Jerry has been working with the state wastewater people, wastewater and potable water people up at um, a and r and probably not as much with the food service persons. There might be communication issues between it all of the different departments. Well, my, and my understanding too was that Gary met with uh, George Carone, who is who is our you know regional person we work with with food service, and our food service folks were were uh, understanding what had been done and what needed to be done, and that we were yes, it's not an ideal world because using those faucets would be great, uh, but that we had a solution that was workable and and again not out of compliance with any regulations. Um, and again, if, if Buildings and Grounds wants to look at priorities for buildings uh, with next year's funding and make a commitment to uh, pull up the concrete and replace those pipes, that's absolutely something we can explore. I think that's a large cost that uh, with, without that committee getting involved and prioritizing that work, you know, that's not something Gary can just go do next week and, you know, I, I think that's something that needs to be a bigger conversation. Yeah, we can. Uh, I get a chance to see if I can get hold of Gary tomorrow, or the day after, and uh, take a look and see what's uh, what's going on. I've, I've had a few uh, a few times working with lead, but it's more often just around a, a school system that uh, in the uh, in the city, in the Rutland, city of Rutland. If, uh, if anything's around uh, Woodstock Avenue, that stuff is around 200 years old, and most of the drops of the houses are made of lead. Um, the advantage of uh, doing that is you have to keep the water running um, for a while before you take any use of it. At, uh, when, because water, once it sits, will actually pull the lead away from certain things. If you run it for a while, it'll uh, get a little bit less. It may not, may not be completely clean, but it, it won't be as, uh, as dangerous. Okay. I will work with him next couple days. Thank you. Next. Can I just sure. ask one more question? Sure. No yeah, no That's it. Not to, the last time we heard mm -hmm. about the remodeling job mm -hmm. was when we were in Tinnis. Oh, and it yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. are there even yeah. going to be doors? Yep. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And so we don't have to talk about it right now. Yep. But like, just like yep. a, where are we at? Yep. Maybe for next meeting yep. or something. Like I that. have not heard that there are any concerns at this point. Um, I'll ask Gary specifically. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it up again during <coughs> agenda building and get on the next meeting, maybe. Yep. Awesome. Absolutely. Yep. Good. Sounds good. Uh, thank you. Um, next would be community engagement. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. That's all I got. All right. And is there another meeting scheduled or anything? Not that I know. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to uh, finance. Good evening, everybody. Um, I will start with payroll this evening. Dated August 12th, we have regular payroll in the amount of one hundred. $1,785.68. Dated August 12th, <clears throat> we have another payroll warrant in the amount of $56,426.29. And dated August 16th, we have regular payroll in the amount of $7,051.85 for a grand total of $180,000. $263.82. And for pay order, we have from the general fund from the fiscal year 22 budget, a pay warrant in the amount of $2,359.60. And from the fiscal year 23 budget, we have a pay warrant from the general fund in the amount of $82,000. $816.91. From our after school program, we have a pay warrant in the amount of $185.95. And 
and also from the general fund, they pay Warren in the amount of $4,532.99. Um, all of the pay Warrens combined total $89,000. $895.45, and I move that we accept and approve these pay orders and this payroll as presented. Second. Okay, Paul, was that you? Yes, it was. Okay, thank you, Paul. Any discussion? Hearing none. And I can't see, so Brian, since you're there, I'll ask that you just kind of Mm -hmm. Eyeball every can do. Thing. So all in all in favor of approving and accepting the pay warrants and the pay roll as presented. That is your hand and or say That aye. is unanimous, Liz. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. Uh, the next meeting of the finance committee is Monday, August twenty second at five PM. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. All right, next, um, Adrian had asked to put on ad hoc. So, um, I don't know if you had anything in particular you wanted to bring up. Um, I will say that I have not made an attempt to schedule a meeting in quite some time. Um, I did schedule some meetings early on, which were attended by Len. I think it was only attended by Len. Um, we never seemed to be able to grab a quorum, so we never really accomplished much, except for having some discussions. Um, if anybody would like to try to get it kick-started again, I'm all ears, but it didn't really draw a whole lot of people in the beginning, so I got tired of showing up at 6 o'clock and just chatting with Len. So. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. No, I, I can <laughs> chat with you anytime, but it doesn't have to be at the school at 6 o'clock at night. So. I would like a wider discussion of this. I mean, we, we seem pretty committed to, to doing this. To, to, to working on an art installation, to bringing the kids in, to bringing the, the teachers in, to, to making this a district-wide um, effort. I'm sorry that people didn't show up. Um, that brings up, I guess, the point of nobody showed up for, or a lot of people didn't show up for a strategic planning meeting today at six o'clock either. And I, I guess I'm feeling sort of grumpy tonight, but. I really wish that we could commit ourselves to doing what we said we were going to do. And we, we I will volunteer for your committee, Matt. Okay. We had some of that conversation earlier before yeah. the strategic planning meeting started. You know, I think I think we're many of us are feeling similarly. Yeah, I, I wonder, are there any pieces of that that we could just bring to the full board? Well, I mean I, I was planning on during um, agenda building mm -hmm. putting on the next board meeting to talk about board attendance oh, okay. um, I mean I, I just I think it's a discussion we should all have I mean we <coughs> join the board it's you know we, there is an you know an obligation to the taxpayers and the voters to uh, um, try to accomplish as much as we can to better the district and better the school I mean I, I'd be more than happy to schedule a an ad hoc meeting right now if, if I can get enough people to agree to be there I'll show up. If we've widened it to, to, to teachers and students, maybe after school started, yeah. I think we mm -hmm. could get we could get a really good working commitment. I, I mean, if, if our teachers, that, you know, I, I think it could work. And, and if, if it's anything that Jody's interested in jumping on, you know, with her equity background, I think that it would be beneficial to this board to try to get as many heads together so well and I and I wonder because there were two pieces there was community had asked about an inclusion statement yep. and I know Clarendon town has adopted one yep. uh, yeah I wonder if the full board took up the inclusion piece that statement might be easy to do as a full board and take care of and not do extra meetings then I wonder if the other piece the project piece makes sense to try and coordinate with Jody and Kaylin and and have the schools own more of that project than the board, if that makes sense. I think it's a phenomenal idea. I really Every do. Every once in a while I have an okay idea. Yeah. I can like it sometimes. No, and that's why you're in this position. Yeah. So. No. Uh, well, and, I, and I think, if I, if I can jump in, I, I think, you know, where we sort of ground to a halt was we weren't getting a whole lot of input mm. from the other schools. Okay. Um, and so I think, <clears throat> You know the 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 uh, inclusion statement is is one piece, but I really think when we were chatting, yeah, 
Um, they were fun though. It just, <laughs> you know, we, I did enjoy them. <laughs> but it was all about. It, it needed to be a district wide mm. um, plan, mm -hmm. so that we would mm -hmm. get something from the elementary schools and mm -hmm. something from the high school mm -hmm. um, that that would include. <laughs> it that would be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we even we even went as far in the discussion as talking about putting some kind of a, you know, display cabinet yeah. in each of the schools where students yeah. could create projects to show, to try to make everyone feel welcome and included, and mm -hmm. you know, we had we had great intentions, we really did, yeah. but it, it it didn't go much further than uh, he and I, the two of us, <laughs> and, and no, um, Anne came to a couple of the meetings. Yes. Yep. And and did attend the first few meetings. Which was which was beneficial, but that's as far as it went. <laughs> I, it's helpful for the committee members to know uh, that I had a meeting with Kaylin and um, the GSA um, staff facilitator. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Gay Straight Alliance students. Um, they want a project for the year that is appropriate mm -hmm. um, and wanted to pre-think that before the year started. And one of the things that they talked about doing is maybe. Um, finding a bulletin board in the school and doing a different history month for historically marginalized groups like Asian mm -hmm. Pacific Islanders, Black history, Latinx history, women's history, um, so that there were content and educational pieces to representation for every single month this year, and that would be student run. Yep. Um, so, you know, I thought that 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 obviously would be reviewed by the facilitator to make sure that it was all appropriate, but I wonder if you guys, as the committee, might like to link up with the student group. They're, they're on sort of the same path that we were on mm -hmm. to an extent, so I, 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 I could, yeah. I mean, why don't, why don't we, <coughs> why don't we set something up for October? Let, let the kids, and, and Jody, I'll take your okay, input, Robin. obviously, you know. In, in, and are we comfortable if we don't call it a board ad hoc committee and we're not looking at a quorum and we're looking at who are the board members that can make it great, but then we have administration join in the group I'm, and, and I'm fine with that. we're, we're yeah. owning a little more of that project. We just, I, have, we just have to make sure we don't have enough board members yeah. attend that there's a sure. quorum. But, sure. Um, well, it's not going to be What? <laughs> that hasn't been well, an issue. That hasn't been an issue. <laughs> I mean, but no. I, I would, I, 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 I can speak for myself. I would be willing to attend. I'm sure Len would be willing to attend as he, he came a few times and someone I else. I signed up for the committee yeah. when I joined. Yeah. And we yeah. just didn't have any meetings. Yeah. I would have so, showed. I yeah. And three. if too many people show up, I'm sure somebody would volunteer to go. Yeah. yeah but, I'm but, sure. So right now there's three of us talking. I mean, I don't know if you'd be willing to attend so, or not. Oh, so. for sure. Okay. 100%. So, Jody, why don't. Let's line up for October. Well, I'm just trying to think. Um, October, what about before the second meeting in October? I'm just throwing this out. For scheduling a meeting? Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And end of September, beginning of October, September around there before the second meeting in October? Well, uh, no, I would say the hour, the six o'clock hour. Oh, but so like, like before a board meeting. Okay. Yeah. The second meeting Alternating in from personnel? So yeah. Yeah, because personnel. But not warn it as a special meeting because we no. aren't intending for it to be a forum it, it board. Is, it is a student yep. meeting that some board members are going to attend. Yeah. Oh, so you'd like, the, you'd like the GSA students to attend if possible? Yeah, that is might be hard at 6 o'clock. Well, we, we I, I could do earlier. I could do, I could do 2 o'clock. I mean, I don't know about you. I, I work for myself. Or I can bring, I can <laughs> offer them attendance, but I can bring all of their information to you. That's fine, too. Yeah. Yeah, if they want to. Do some stuff up for us. We can go over. Yeah. Okay. And if you know, if there, and there, if there is, because I can also do basically any time. I just need to be warned ahead of time. So we want to shoot for six on October nineteenth. Thank you. <laughs> October what? Nineteenth or something? At six o'clock. Is that okay? Yeah. And no warning for that meeting. That's a uh, right. Coordinate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we don't have to warn it. But can like, we get some kind of announcement oh, a out reminder? to the board member? Yes. Jody, can you manage I that? I happily do that. You have to, dis I don't know how this part works. You have to dissolve the ad hoc committee? Because if we Probably. were all at a meeting and we're yeah. on the ad hoc committee, then that would be a quorum yeah. for yeah. them. Yes, you you're right. That. 
Yeah, good point. And yep. Len, you had said a couple meetings back that your ad hoc committee was over. Yes. So we did that in public board that, meeting. That's so, being yeah, I think so I will make a motion <coughs> to dissolve the ad hoc equity committee and turn it over to the ooh, what's Inclusive um, Art Display Committee. Yes. Can we call but it like an equity. administrative committee, similar to the yes. equity committee? Yes. So right. the administrative committee on um, inclusive. Inclusivity. Okay, great. There we go. <laughs> There's a word. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll send you all an email a week before, okay? Perfect. All in favor? Adrian, does that answer what you want? Oh, it's not what I want. I just think that if we have a committee that's been in existence for a year, close to it, we either well, need to do something or so something else. I, are we heading in the direction that you're okay I'm with? I'm for it. Okay. I, I mean, I'm fine. I, okay. I, I think we're going to see some, some better progress made. Um, and. Uh, we owe it to the community, so let's let's get it done. Yeah, we said we would do it, and and yep. we're, the, we're probably the only group in this area that doesn't have an inclusivity statement. Um, I think it doesn't look good, so I think no. it's progress. We'll, we'll fix it. So. Yep, I think it's good. All right, so now we're on to transact other legal business. Anything? <laughs> okay, so we will move on to agenda building now. I did want to put something on the agenda for uh, um, board member attendance. Got it. Also, Josh had brought up the, an update on the buildings and grounds. Buildings, the old yep. district foundations. building. Yeah, foundations building. Does anyone else? SLP, five minutes for Coral, just in case we have a contract. Perfect. Is Kim, Kim coming? She'll be the next meeting. OK. Uh, I have it on the calendar that we would go over the budget materials, uh, the calendar with the full board. Is that reasonable, Liz? If we're meeting in finance on Monday, we'll have things solid that we can bring it to the full board then? Because technically, uh, per policy, we're supposed to present a calendar. Yep. So. Okay. Um, now, an Thank another, you, thing, another thing as well, I mean, I don't know what the situation is. Um, I was out of town for a little while, so I didn't mm -hmm. get too caught up in my email. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to put anything on there as an update on the bus driver situation? Are we all set for the year? Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can just tell you at this point in time, we're planning on running our standard routes okay. to start the year. Okay. Good. We do Good. have a contingency plan that is like the contingency plan we tried at the end of the year last year, okay. but with more stops. So we took some feedback from running that for about a week or a week and a half and uh, Nicole sat down and mapped out some other stops we could add to make that a little better route to run. That's still just the when we're in a bind route. Okay. If we're down a driver, we've got some strategies we can put in place like we did a lot last year. So uh, good, good point, transact other legal business. We'll mention that right now, and then we'll go back to agenda building. Okay. So no huge update because things are in good shape. Perfect. Yep. Okay. You, you really said that? <laughs> The timing might be a bit early, but mm. do we put a block in for, I know last school year mm. we rotated schools. Mm. Do we mm -hmm. look at rotating? Mm -hmm. Let me talk to the leadership team and figure out if they That's have things the going on that are going to. too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring something back and we can take that question up. Um, probably not by then. Maybe second meeting in September. Yeah, yeah. I'll. Re I'll Keep that on my long-term agenda building list. Does anybody else have anything else for uh, agenda building? Okay. So we will move on to executive session if if required. Do we have any executive session? None that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, one last thing. Um, I have uh, chaired the last two meetings. Thank you for everybody being patient with me. Um, this is kind of a new thing to me. And on that note, can I get a motion to adjourn? A second. All right. Um, all in favor? Good. Good. Yep. Yeah, perfect. We're out of here. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Have a good, good night. night. Thank you. Thank you.